Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is so good to see everybody's faces this morning. I just praise God. I thank God for who he is, and I am so grateful. Let me just uh, pour this in your spirit because God has just been dealing with me all this morning, dealing with me this week. There are some of us who come out because we remember all the things that we've gone through. We remember all the things that God has brought us through. And then there are some who we come through because we're going through some stuff right now. Now, that's not the only reason. I'm not even trying to take from the fact that I just want to be in the house of God to give him praise. But there are sometimes you have some things that you've gone through in your life. And you start thinking about them and you go, "Uh uh-uh, I can't sit home today. I got to press my way. Or there's some things you're going through right now. And you go, I got to get to the house of God. Because nobody, not your neighbor, not even your spouse, knows the pain that we've had before. They can't tell your pain. They can see it, but they don't know what it is when you go through that pain. But it's the best way to get out of any pain, any sorrow, any conflict, any mess that you're in. is to lift up a praise before the Lord. He's a worthy God. I was thinking about when I had cancer. I was thinking about when I had blood clots. I was thinking about when I used to be in my room, in a room, crying because I went through a divorce. And all I did was go to work, go to church, come home, cry. Go to work, go home, go to church, cry. That was my path for a long time, almost a year. But the cry started going from a cry of, God, it hurts so bad, to a cry of, hallelujah, God, I thank you. I can see the light, God. I can see myself coming through. And when the praise started to come and the praise was for real, I praised my way outside of it. So right now, all the things that you've gone through, all the things that you may be going through, all the things that you believe God to get you to, let's lift up a praise so we can get to it. Amen. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, Jehovah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. We praise your name. There is none like you, Jehovah. We lift your name up. You're higher than any other name. You're Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You're Jehovah, uh, take a new our righteousness. You're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You're Jehovah Shiloh, our peace. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. We praise your name. We lift you up. We love you in Prince of Peace, God. And now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you enter this place. The people of God and myself all on one accord in our bishop. We come together on one accord, God. Holy Spirit, come. We come on one accord to ask you to come in this place. We come all on one accord to ask you to hover in this place. We come on one accord to ask that deliverance be thick in this place. We come on one accord to ask that healing be in this place. We come on one accord to ask that there be love and peace that abound in this place. We love you. We lift you up. We speak to the families of our congregation, God. Our loved ones that want to be saved or our loved ones who don't want to be saved and don't know you yet. We ask that we would be the example and that you would hear our prayers on their behalf. Save them now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would help us where we're weak and we waver. Help our unbelief and help our salvation to grow. Help our Christian walk to be strong and rooted in you, God. Move like never before, God. Let us be the church you come back for. Looking for without a spot or a wrinkle. We love you. We adore you, God. We believe that you're about to do a new thing in this place. And a new thing in us. Abound. Move and loose shackles. Loose the shackle of addiction. Loose the shackles, God, of us being in your way. We love you. We honor you. 
We adore you. In Jesus' name, all over the congregation, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a worthy God. And guess what? He's a faithful, consistent God. He's not like us. He's not like man. He hears your prayers, and if he said he'll do it, guess what? He's, he will do it. He's going to do it. It's not a question. He's not a liar. Let's give him praise one more time. And you may be seated in the presence of God, our almighty God. All right, really quickly, we're not going to do a lot because we still have to. We're going to give you out some um, gifts for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And with that being said, and welcome, everybody. Let me say that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to you all who have shown up on our social media platform. We're so grateful because we know you could have gone anywhere but you've come here and we are grateful thank you to the youth ministry leaders and i'll get to my uh, breast cancer thank you to the youth ministry leaders they have worked so so hard to make things for your youth up uh, just outstanding and that it's successful so please make sure that you're bringing your youth out we are doing tirelessly I can't even tell you what time I went to bed last night and I had been studying and preparing beforehand but we are grateful because we recognize that our priority is in our one of our priorities is in our youth and please make sure that you are bringing your youth out and make sure that they're here every Sunday and Wednesday and bring some other youth out as well also this is where I was going a few minutes ago please remember to wear your ribbons to church next Sunday you know that's the Sunday that we'll dress in pink please make sure you wear your ribbons because I know they keep giving ribbons out but if you see I bring mine every time so bring your ribbons with you on next Sunday if you already have some and lastly um almost last please sign up for trunk or treat i haven't looked at the list again but we we need more than five cars we need more than six cars we need as many cars as we can get so all you have to do is i don't we don't care what your car looks like you can dress it up any way you want but please make sure that you sign up for um trunk or treat and all you have to do is have your car there we will provide the candy the church will make sure that you have the candy we'll divide the candy up that we have and lastly your giving if we could put the giving up we praise God because we are a given church but I thank God because my gift keeps making room for me hallelujah every time I think about my giving I always push myself to give I always push myself to give and sometimes it's uncomfortable bishop had said something i said oh lord i know my hand gonna raise when he said because i am always trusting it's uncomfortable because you know you like i give to this i do this and i do that and then sometimes it's uncomfortable to you but when you push yourself to give god will always make room your gift will make room for you when you find yourself in trouble your gift will make room for you when you find yourself needing something i go god i'm a tither and believer i shouldn't be you said I never have to beg my gifts makes room for me and I watched on yesterday as I was on a zoom how I stayed steadfast I had some problems with uh with hurt hurt, um, hurt feelings with something and God just showed me that my gift it was my gift that made room for me and all of a sudden all those feelings went away and he showed me that I I waited and I believed and I trusted in him so my gift made room for me all right let's give God praise with that note so if you want to give, please make sure that you can give at www.princeofpeacepc.org. You can also give at dollar sign P-O-P-P-C-1 if you use Cash App. As well, you can give by Square at our kiosk in the back, and we have trustee Keisha back there who will help man that for us. GiveLify, if you want to give by GiveLify.com, you can do so as well. All you have to do is put in Prince of Peace Praise Center, and it will pop up. You'll see a picture of the church and Bishop and Pastor Bishop Reginald and Pastor Kia Smith, and you will know you're in the right place. As well, you can raise your hand if you have cash or check, and the ushers will get an envelope in your hand, and then you can give at our canisters at any time during worship because we are a worshiping church, and we recognize that giving is a part of of worship amen amen all right so now we're going to do our giveaways right now for our breast cancer awareness you already pulled some or those are new they, these need to go in you could have put it in yourself all right 
Here we go. Uh oh. Did one fall? Last two. Okay. How many do you have? You got the gift? Okay. All right. There you go. And I'll get you to pull the n next numbers. Let me see. 1287. 1287. <laughs> Somebody see Lolita ticket. Oh, okay. Well, she she don't get one. Oh, it's oh, okay. Here we go. All right. Thank you, Sister Shana. All right, there you go. Some fill out. Okay. Next one is 3801278. All right, Sister Nancy. Let me see. Can I get one of the up? Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you, Sister Amy. That's Sister Nancy Blakeney. Next is 3801286. 3801286. Deacon Brown. Y'all know these are pink, so the men, y'all might want to give them. Well, I would keep it if I wouldn't care if it was pink, if I were a man. 3801291. 3801291. Yeah, Miss Joyce. Three eight zero one two six seven. Three eight zero. Oh, Kelly, Sister Kelly. All right. Three eight zero one two seven zero. Three eight zero one two seven zero. All right, we're gonna move on. Oh, Tanya, Sister Tanya. Come on, Sister Tanya. That's it. All right, men, if y'all could move that back for me and then, or either move it to the hallway. Now we will have our rolling announcements. And before we do our rolling announcements, I'm just gonna say real quickly, please make sure, I told y'all the key to breast cancer and I'm sure other cancers as well, I know other cancers as well, is early detection. When you think something, do something. But for breast cancer, make sure women and men especially women with mammograms, get your mammogram. But men, if you know something's different, please make sure that you go get checked out. Don't have any shame because the shame is only if you wait, okay? So if you feel something and you feel like you need to go to the doctor, please do so. But early detection is key. Make sure you're getting your mammograms and for other cancers as well. Make sure you're getting those prostate exams. Make sure you're getting your colon, um, what is it, colonoscopies. Make sure you're doing those things. Early detection is key. We know God is a healer, but let me tell you this. I'm, I'm saying, God, I'm going to be wise and do what I need to do so that I don't even have to come to you. But if I got to come to you, I'm glad I know you as Jehovah Rapha, my healer. All right, so now let's go for our um, rolling announcements. Welcome to Prince of Peace Praise Center the church where people go to grow. We thank you for coming out today. For all of you who came to our church and those who showed up on our social media platforms, we're grateful that you came out to visit with us and worship with us. Give yourselves a hand all over the congregation. Join us every Wednesday at 6 p.m. for a study of a year in the Bible with our very own Pastor Kia Smith. We take this opportunity to learn more about the Bible with in-depth passages as well as scriptures, also asking questions and breaking down the word so we truly gain an understanding of what God has in store for us. Then afterwards, join us for a powerful Word Wednesday with our very own Bishop Reginald Smith, where he tells us what thus saith the Lord with scriptures and passages that will impact our lives. 
be sure to tune in live with our social media platforms and help spread the gospel by sharing with your family and friends. On Wednesday, October 23rd, we will have our adult financial literacy class at 7 p.m. here at Prince of Peace Praise Center. This is going to be an event where you're going to learn how to build and secure your financial future. So we ask you to please join, invite your family and friends so they can all be empowered and knowledge and ideas and strategies that is going to secure your legacy. Also in the back, we have a brief survey where we're asking you to please fill out three topics that you are interested in learning. The answers are completely anonymous and there's not a right or wrong answer, but it will allow us to organize the lesson plan in the best way where it affects everyone involved. You can choose from options such as retirement planning, generational wealth building, investment, debt management, and more. For more information, we ask you to see Sister Christina McCoy or Minister Tim. Extreme faith. Please be advised, there is a women's meeting on October 24th at 6.30 p.m. with Pastor Kia Smith. This year, Prince of Peace Praise Center will be celebrating Harvest Night, and we need your help to make it awesome. We're asking all those who are able to donate candy to our youth ministry. You can drop off bags of individually wrapped candy in the bin that you see at the entrance. Or you can see a member on our youth team for more information. We thank you so much for your donations. Also, we're asking partners to sign up for our trunk or treat. If you would like to participate, we ask you to please see the sign up sheet in the back on our information desk. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We'll celebrate breast cancer and other cancers on the fourth Sunday in October. Everyone can wear pink. If you have cancer or are currently diagnosed, have a loved one or someone who has it, then you can wear those specific cancer colors. If you are a cancer victor who's had it healed or currently diagnosed, we ask you to please send your name and share which cancer so we can ensure you are represented. We thank God for your strength and courage, and we are here to support you all. Join us Friday, November 15th through Saturday, November 16th for a fun-filled trip to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where we will be seeing the stage play Daniel at the Sights and Sounds Theater. We are so excited to fellowship with our church family and loved ones. We encourage you to invite family and friends to come fellowship with us as well. Prince of Peace, God has done it again. Join us for an hour of power at our second location, Mac Ben Elementary School in Suffolk, Virginia. This is going to be an awesome time where we're witnessing God's vision bestowed on our bishop and pastor, and we ask you to all join us at 1253 Nasman Parkway in Suffolk, Virginia, 23434. We can't wait to see you all there. we like to take this time to welcome all of our first time visitors here at Prince of Peace Praise Center. We know that you could have went anywhere to worship, and we are so glad that you decided to worship with us. We pray that you enjoy your visit and that we will see you again very soon. Also, we thank you for your continuous giving through your tithes, your offering, and your seed. We know God loves a cheerful giver and we thank God for it. If you would like to give, we have many options to choose from. You can go online to princeofpeacepc.org or you can give via Cash App at dollar sign P-O-P-P-C-1. If you would like to use your credit card, we have a square kiosk in the back that's manned by one of our trustees. And also we have Giveify, where you can go online and visit the Prince of Peace Praise Center page and give any amount that you choose. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and one of the ushers will accommodate and you can give to our canisters in the front at any time. 
We thank you so much for giving into the storehouse and sowing your seeds on good ground. Now, we invite you to stand, if you are able, for our mission, vision, and giving declaration. Our mission statement. The mission for this part of Zion is to reach out and let someone know that Jesus is love. Also, we must teach, preach, and show the lost that Jesus is true. Through the word of God, all things are possible. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Now for our vision statement. The vision for this part of Zion is to grow the people of God in such a way that our impact and outreach expand the world. We will be a haven for the youth, a launching pad for entrepreneurs, and a lighthouse for the lost. Our giving declaration. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs. In Jesus' name, amen. opportunity lord we thank you for just your grace and your mercy we thank you just for providing meeting every needs lord being our rock our foundation lord though we don't have to trust in man lord we can trust in you lord we know that you'll provide all things oh god we know that you don't make any wrong decisions lord you know that you don't make any mistakes oh god we thank you for it lord we ask you just to bless the service bless the choir lord bless our bishop and our pastor god bless all the church members lord all those that visited on, on our social media god Bless all of them. Touch them in a mighty way today, oh God. Let them know that what they're going through is not bigger than you, oh God. Let them know that what their problems is, Lord, that you are solving, Lord. You're a heart fixed and a mind regulator, God. And we thank you for it, Lord. We ask you to let your will be done in this life, Lord. We ask you to continue to guide and order our footsteps. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. How many of you want God's presence in this place? How many of you want him in this place? Amen. Amen. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. If we come together on one accord, which we've already done, and we lift up the name of the Lord, I believe his glory will rise in this place. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's give God the glory and the honor because he deserves it. Come on. Let's worship him in his place. Oh.
Let the glory of the Let Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise of God yeah. Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory lift them up. Let the praise of God exciting time. First of all, let's give it up for our bishop, Bishop Reginald D. Smith. And then if we could just give the choir a hand clap as well, lifting up the name of the Lord. So this exciting time is it's time for our youth to depart. So all youth ages 3 to 17, when you hear our call, we would like you, if all the youth um, people who are working today, if you could just line up there so we can receive our young people. So 
Prince of Peace, Praise Center Youth. You ready? I'm going to give it to you one more time. Prince of Peace, Praise Center Youth, out. Let us go. Come on, clap your hands for God. Amen. Thank you, First Lady. Your blessing. Can y'all clap your hands for the youth? We, woo, I'm like my wife. We need when we, man, we just want to thank God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, God is awesome. We got a whole bunch of youth back there today. Amen. Thank y'all so much for bringing your kids out. If you, if you don't believe me, I'm going to just tell you something very... First, let me do something real quick. Hey, Mama, how you doing? Glad to see my mama there. Um, I want to say uh, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, how y'all doing today? Um, so, first I want to thank God. This is amazing for... So, myself and Mr. Earl, we came in here Thursday and we had the putty back there in the back. So Thursday we jumped to Wednesday. First, let me start with Wednesday. Y'all did an excellent job for the 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 kids. Can y'all clap? God is an amazing God. So we was packed out and we're getting packed out every every Wednesday and every Sunday. Um, it's just a mantle is on us. I mean, and I have learned that you gotta get it while it's your season. Because seasons change. Amen. Um, so then they came in here Friday. I came Friday. Now, Friday they set up all the equipment in Suffolk. So we don't have to try to pull anything, set up anything. Everything is set up. Then Saturday they came in here. They painted. They pressure washed. Um I had a team setting up, um, passing out door hangers in Suffolk. The cleaning team was here and just other things that's moving around. And I personally want to thank you because it takes so much to get to this next level. It takes a lot. Amen. And that's why I'm going to preach about destiny today. Um, you, in, in the middle of you going to another level, you cannot complain because it, it's that it, It'll stagnate, it, 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 it'll stunt your growth. Amen. It'll stunt your growth. And you're trying to figure out why I'm not at this level so um, yet. But God is truly doing something big. It's a, it's t the teamwork makes the dream work. There's no one person that's doing this. It's all of us together. Never think that you're doing more than the next person. Amen. The Bible says that we're all many different pieces but we're, we're one body. Somebody say one body. So I want to truly thank everybody for all of the parts that they are doing. And, and it's amazing how God is just launching us um, to d different levels. It's different levels. So I want you to clap your hands for that, please. Also, I need you, you to go on your phone and I need you to go on our social media, Facebook page, and I need you to because I want somebody that's not here to hear this today. Um, this can grow you today um, to another level. Um, God is truly blessing us. So make sure you like it. Prince of Peace Praise Center. Um, go up there and share the page. And we just want to do what we do. Amen. Uh, God is truly blessing us. Also, we ha have launched not just the youth. But all of our the men department, we have not the young men, but um, we have 10 men on each team that's active in our church. That's a lot of men. Can y'all clap? That's a lot of men that we have 20 active. That's not the young kids. The, and, and one thing, let me talk to the ladies real quick. Y'all, thank y'all. I, I can't concentrate. Thank y'all so much. Is that when you get you somebody, make sure this going to hurt you. Make sure you get you a man of God. Because only what you do for Christ is going to last. All right. Just remember that. That's not to throw a stone at you. That's not to hurt you. But, but when that storm comes, you got, you got to make sure that the man is anchored 
in, 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 in God. Another thing, let me just tell you this, um, is that the men of the house, if, if you're not a tither, you're going to kill your whole household. Uh-oh, got some heads going down. Pick them back up. Pick them back up. Pick them back up. Somebody said, pick your head back up. My mama used to tell me, look at my eyes while I beat you. My mama used to tell me, look, look at my eyes while I beat you. Amen. Because the next time you're going to think about it when you do it again. Amen. Somebody said, look at my, that, that's a bad beating when you got to look in your mama's eyes. And I'm trying to blink while she beat me. Woo, Jesus. Yes, sir. Look in my eyes. Somebody said, look in his eyes. Look in his eyes. I'm just, I'm, I'm here to be the teacher to, to help you get to this next level. Because the enemy going to come without, uh, with or without your permission. All right? The enemy going to come. So I'm just girding you up for when the storm comes that you'll be able to handle some things and, and to stop throwing in the towel. All right? You got to stop. Somebody say, stop throwing in the towel. Stop throwing in the towel. Somebody use the towel to, wet, to wipe the sweat off your face because you're in a battle. All right? So make sure you're a giver. Um, we'll, we'll hit that one more time. I got to hit that about three times. That'll get in your spirit. All right. So we're going to do a roll call next week for the men. All right. Don't ever say they will get it done. I don't have to go. Make sure you come in and, and get it done. All right. Because so, suppose everybody had that mindset that I don't, I don't have to give. They're going to they're gonna keep giving. Now, you're trying to figure out why your bills are so tight. You're trying to figure out why you robbing Peter to pay Mary and Jonah. Amen. You don't want from the old New Testament to the old. You paying people in the Old Testament when you should be having something new. Oh, I just messed up right there. Amen. Just um, somebody said, get yourself together. I'm going to preach this morning from the topic. I'm coming out of the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 1. And so the topic today is God holds the key to your destiny. Somebody said, you got to have kids crying because if you don't have kids crying, your church ain't growing. Amen? If, if not, you can see that he winded up there. Him got to get, I like that because you got a bunch of old people like me. I'm old. We get, I'm grumpy. Amen? A church full of grumpy people. Amen? You need some old, you need some young kids crying. Sign of growth. So I'm going to preach from the topic this morning. Somebody say, God holds the key to your destiny. To your destiny. And, and I have learned in my walk with Christ that a lot of us want to get to this next level. Whatever level it is, but we, we really don't want to put in the extra work. It's like getting overtime on your job. You can't sit home to get the overtime. You have to go in on your day off. Can I get an amen? So God is expecting you to go in on your day off to get you some overtime. All right? And so we're going to talk about Abraham, and then I'm going to give you things that you need to get to this next level. All right? And there, there are some things you need. You, you can't keep getting a word on Sunday and go home and let somebody talk the word out of you. The worst thing you can ever do is get around a gossiper after you done got a shouting word. Can I get an amen? Oh, you should you should have stayed in your car, ate a hot dog from Hardy's, and, 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 and burped. Amen. So you got to get around people who, 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 who's on the same accord with you because iron shopping iron. Amen. You keep getting around plastic and nobody's shopping anybody. Ne never, never leave church and talk bad about your church with a non-member. I'm, I'm trying to help you real quick because you're going to need all of this for your next level. You're going to need all, you're going to need Wednesday Bible study, early morning in the word, prayer, year in the Bible, eating cook out. You're going to need all this for your next level. And a lot of us, we really think it's just a game and, and it's not, this is life or death. This, this, can, this can make you or it can break you. So let me just talk about Abraham real quick. Genesis 22, 1 through 5. All right? 
All right. So it says, now that it came to pass, you can just read with me, um, uh, after these things that God tested Abraham. And I get tired of people telling me that God don't test you. It says right here that God tested Abraham. Some of us are in a test right now. Matter of fact, you're in a storm, and, and you, you, you're thinking that it's a hurricane five, but really it's only a one. You, you, it's the way that you look at things that determines the, 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 the size of the storm. Amen. You, you, you got to look at storms and situations that, that with all things, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. All right. And so now Abraham, he was tested by God. Why? Because this is good, Edgar, because God blessed Abraham and Sarah with a child. And, and Abraham, and God wanted to see, was Abraham going to love the child? More than he loved God. A, a, a lot of us love other things more than God. For the Bible says, have no other God before me. And, and you got to put God first. Look at somebody say, put God first. Put, see, if you want a supernatural change, you got to put God first. You got to put him first. So now Abraham, God says, I need a test. And some of y'all are being tested now with your money, your job, your husband, your wife, your, your, because you're putting things before God. You're putting things before God. And God said, just try me first, and, 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 and I'll add everything that you want. Can I get it? See, if you put God first, he'll add everything. He'll give you health. He'll give you wealth. He'll, he'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. But you got to put God first. You, you keep trying to worry about your husband or your wife. If you put God first, God will do the working on them. Am I helping somebody? You spend all your time, all your mean face, all, whatever, trying to fix something. And all you have to do is turn it over to God because I have learned that he's a heavy load carrier. He says, cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. Why do you keep carrying that weight in your hand? Somebody say, give it to God. Can you imagine? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, man, well, can you go get mine? What I do. Can you imagine if I carried everybody's problem in church? <coughs> the 10 pounds I lost, I gained 50 more pounds. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm trying to carry other people's stuff. And, and everybody in the entire building has different attitudes. One day you up, next day you down. Next day you lukewarm. Next day, you shouting. So I, I would have to try to figure out how you feel. That's why most pastors, they preach going to the back. Because they, they, they can't, they, they can't I, I can't adjust your feelings. See, people want you to adjust feeling like you do the thermostat. If you hot, just turn on a little cold. But, but you got you to gotta give them to God. Amen. Thank you, sir. You got to give them to God. So now Abraham, I'm going to add a little because I have some points I have to give you. So now Abraham, God tells Abraham, he says, take your son. We're in Bible study. What was his son's name? Isaac. Take your only son and, and go, to, uh, go on the mountaintop, Moriah, and, and crucify, sacrifice your son. But when I was reading this the other day, it got in my spirit. It wasn't just a sacrificial offering, but it was really called a burnt offering. That we're going to, we're going not, not just you're going to sacrifice your son, but we're going to burn him because God loved the smell of a sacrifice. So now you got to, not just cut your son up, but you got to burn your son. Am I helping y'all? And some of us are holding things that we should have been sacrificed spiritually. You should have been gave it to God, but, but you're scared to sacrifice it because you think you need it. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't give my son, to, I can't give my job to God. Baby, you, if I give my job to God, they're going to take the overtime and I might not make it. You better give it to God. That's why you don't like your job now. Am I helping somebody? And so he says, take him up. But, 
and, and sacrifice them. He says, but I'm going to give you this verse, and this is where we're going to start working. I'm going to give you Genesis 22, 1 and 5. This is when Abraham's destiny starts. This is when it starts. He says, and Abraham said to the young men, because he had some men with him, so he told the men, stay at the bottom. This, this is when your destiny starts. Because you can't, you can't have a whole bunch of people around you when you're trying to get to another level and they keep pulling you. Amen? They keep pulling you. They, they don't know that they're pulling you, but every time they bring something that's aggravating, every time a problem that don't involve you, they're really pulling you. And every now and then you got to tell them, stay down at the bottom because I'm going to talk to God. Somebody say, be quiet, I'm going to talk to God. So he says, and Abraham said to the young man, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and we're going to worship. So Abraham called the sacrifice a worship. Because he understood something, watch this, that his destiny depended on this. Oh, that's good right here. His, see, your destiny de is dependent on the things that you are not willing to do. And that's why you can't get to this next level because you're scared to sacrifice the thing that you love. So he says, watch this. He says, I will go yonder and worship. This is what got me. I shouted in my house when I heard this. He says, and we will come back to you. We, we is not by yourself. He said, Abraham tell the, tell the little guys that was walking with him, stay here, and we are coming back. So Abraham, already, he already knew that they had to sacrifice their son, his son. But he knew, some, some, somebody say, my destiny requires for us to come back. You, so he knew, he says, he says I'm, I'm going to follow God, but I serve a God who will never leave me nor forsake me. He, he said, I serve a God that just want to test me, but you know, in my spirit, that I will kill my son for him. So, but, but I serve a God that he know I love my son so much. Y'all got to help me. He says that, that I know me and my son Isaac is coming back. Why do you keep worrying about stuff that you have no control over? All you have to do is say, you know what? This is a part of my destiny. I, I need you to lay hands on yourself and say, this is a part of my destiny. Anybody going through anything? Just say, this is a part of my destiny. You got to go through because where you're trying to go in life requires you something greater. See, when you was five, you pray, now lay me down to sleep. That ain't destiny prayer. But when you get a little older and bills and trials and tribulations come, you'll say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I serve a God who will never leave me nor forsake me. I serve a God who sets high and looks low. I serve a God yo, that opened up the Red Sea. I serve a God. Somebody say, that's destiny prayer. That's destiny prayer. Because when you got a destiny, you'll get up at 3 in the morning when everybody is still asleep because your destiny requires... You, watch this. Watch this. This is good. Future. Someone say future. Not the rapper. But future. Your future. Watch this. Your future. Did I write it down? It requires time. So... Time is going to make your future anyway. Time. Somebody say time. But your destiny requires God's timing. All right. I just messed you up. So your destiny inside of future is going to require your God's timing. So it might, destiny might not come when you want to. But you have to stay in God's timing to get your destiny. Y'all don't miss that. And so what the enemy has done, 
He has peeped into your future. Because future doesn't require prophecy. Future is just time. So the devil have access to your future, but the enemy can't stop your destiny. God, man. Have, have you ever had people that, that didn't like what you was doing and, and you just keep growing? Because the enemy can't stop your future, your destiny. The only thing the enemy can do is put things in, your, in place that look like it's not going to work. And if you are a weak Christian, you will, you will get destiny and future confused. Somebody said, I can't get it confused. Be because, because your destiny has to grow with time. And in time, the enemy going to come. The enemy did Adam and Eve. He's, he says, look, just eat. Watch this. Eat this apple, and you can see what God can see. Because the enemy saw their destiny. And you got to understand, the enemy... Never attacks your now. It always attack your destiny. It, it all in Matthew four when Jesus has just finished fasting, the Bible says, then the angels sent him on the mountaintop. And every time the devil kept telling Jesus, turn this bread into stone or or whatever or whatever. And you got to understand. He was trying to, if, if I can just get him to worship me, I can get him not to go to the cross. I can get him to, to for everybody can go to hell because they can't, they can't handle what I bring. So what, he, what the enemy does, it attack your, that, that's, what, that's why the enemy try to get kids now. Because if I can get them now smoking and drinking, lying and cussing and shooting, I can make sure that they never reach their pinnacle or the peak of their destiny. So that's why you got to be a coverer over your child because of their destiny. That's why you can't let nobody speak nothing crazy in your child ear. You got to be very careful who your children get around because the enemy is trying, not trying to get them now, but it's trying to get their destiny so they never grow to their potential. Am I helping y'all? Tell somebody I, I need God in the season. And so, and so Abraham tells them, he says, we're, we're coming back. So th this is a couple of things that I pulled out of this to give to you. So the first thing we need to understand, that even though Abraham was getting ready to sacrifice his son Isaac, he still prepared. See, what destiny, you have to prepare for it. See, why everybody else at the football game, you need to be laying out with God. You keep trying to be like the rappers and all. You got to put that mess to the side. If you, now, you keep getting mad because your neighbor is moving to another level. So you got to prepare for your destiny. If you really want to go somewhere, it's like a doctor who never studied. They're going to mistake. They're going to fail the exam. And so to get to another to another level, you're gonna have to let you gonna have to put your feelings to the side. Somebody say, put your feelings to the side, put them in your pocket. Because your feelings will stunt your destiny. Can I the person you don't like is the person that might help you get to your destiny. The enemy never attacks anything that that it, it always attacks something. That, that, that you need to get to another level. It, it always attacked that. It always, watch this. Number two, Abraham went looking. The Bible says that when he got there, there was a ram in the bush. So you, watch this. You always got to look for things that can elevate you to another level. Tell them I always got to look. I, I got to go to church. I got I to gotta be around positive people. I got I to gotta get around things that can help me to another level. Next thing, watch this. Abraham, watch this. He finds the ram. Number three, God blesses Abraham. If you go looking, God might just bless you. You ain't looking hard enough. You keep saying out of your mouth, this thing is too hard and it might not work. You got 
to always know that God has a realm in the bush for your destiny. Somebody said, God got a realm in the bush for my destiny. It, it, might not, it might not come when you want it, but, the, but there's something that's going to get you out of You keep saying, I don't have enough money. If you work in destiny, that check just might come. But you got to do God. You keep laying out, I can't make it. I'm addicted. It won't work. Baby, you got to get up and say, I got to go get my destiny. Watch this. Destiny will leave you and find somebody else. The Bible says that Saul was the king, but he wouldn't follow orders. So God took his destiny and gave it to David. Just because you won't do it, God will pick somebody else to do it. Can I get an amen? You're, you're, you're not the author and, and the, the finisher, the starter, and the ender of God. God will just pick some, God will pick your enemy. That which you should have had, now your enemy got. It. Can I get an amen? All, all you got to do is stop looking at the situation and the problem and keep following destiny. Somebody say, stop looking at the problem. You keep looking at the storm. The Bible says when, when Peter saw Jesus, they thought it was a ghost. And he told he, Peter asked him, can I, can, I, can I come out? Can I come out on the water? Yeah, come on. He started walking. But when he looked at the storm, that, that's why you keep sinking. Because you keep looking at, I ain't got enough. You, you keep looking at, it's too big for me. You, you keep looking at, I, I don't know how it's going to work. It's already worked out because it's a part of your destiny. Tell them it's already worked out. So, Bishop, tell me some things that'll help me fulfill my destiny. Because you need, you need, you need some things that'll help you get to the next, next level. Because of what you're doing ain't working. You stand, you stand frustrated. Every, you getting overtime. You getting time and a half. You getting new jobs. And it still ain't working. Somebody said it still ain't working. Ain't. Hey, have anybody ever been, now put your hands, don't put, don't, don't put your hands, just do like this. Just say, hey, amen. And it's still that that that's because you're out of your boundaries. And you got it. Your, your, your destiny requires your boundaries. And every time you go that way, that's not your destiny. Your, your destiny is on the straight and the narrow. Amen. And and by now, you should be the entrepreneur of your business. But you have allowed somebody to tell you. That is too hard or you don't have enough. Can I get an amen? You still working for the man. I don't know who the man is because you don't have enough drive. I'm talking to somebody now. I'm stuck right here. You don't, you don't have enough drive to step out on your own. And see, when you're out of destiny, when you're out of bounds, you stay tired because the enemy never wants you to find destiny again. You get up sleepy. You go, am I helping somebody here? Matter of fact, you tired right now, amen. I hope he just stopped talking. Right now you tired because you out of, and you keep going this way. You you doing the the, Egypt, the Israelites forty years out, out of destiny. Yeah. They 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 lost destiny. Say they lost track. When when you lose destiny, when destiny get out of you, you you lose track. Because destiny is your GPS to get to God. You don't lost. Watch this. So I, I got to get back on. Tell somebody I need to get back on track. I'm tired. I really want to quit, but I'm scared of what people might say. Give me my stuff. <laughs> if I can just leave my job and, and go to Philadelphia and change my name. And change my number. That's how you feel when you get out of destiny. But when you in destiny, you, you, you feel good. You're saying, you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
When, when you're in, when you're in destiny, you, you'll start saying stuff like this. Uh, my help cometh from the Lord. You'll, you'll start saying that, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will lift up a standard. When, when, you in, when, when you're in destiny, you don't care what it looks like. You know that what I'm going through is a part of my growth. Somebody say, I'm going through something now. Woo. And when you come out of this, you might be two feet taller. Because this thing is a part of your growth. And you, and you can't tell your problems to people who don't have destiny because they will kill your destiny. You got to tell somebody, look, I'm going through and I need all your prayers. I need a couple dollars. Y'all better help me. I, I, I just need to get to the place where I know God is in my life. I, I got to get back to the place where I can hear God. I, I got to get back to the place where I can see God. I, I got to get back to the place because the enemy has took my happiness. The enemy has took my joy. I, I wake up sad. I go to bed sad. But I, I got to get back to the place that I can wake up and lift my hands and say, if it wasn't for God on my side, where would I be? Tell somebody, I got to get back on track. I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. I'm about to throw in a towel. But today I have decided to follow Jesus. The old folk would say, no turning back. Uh, no turning back. Tell somebody, I'm going to follow God in this season. Uh, it might be hard. I might not look like I'm following God. But in this season, I got to get my destiny back. Tell somebody I got to get it back. Tell them I'm tired of feeling like a loser. I'm tired of feeling like it's not going to work. I'm going to give you two and we out. Watch this. Y'all hold right there and we're going to pump this thing up. I'm going to give you two. I got ten. But I'm not preaching the same thing in Suffolk today. I'm preaching something else. I'll come back next week and we hear that. When, you, when you're in your destiny, before you lose it, you have to have spiritual awareness. Be because the devil is not trying to get you in the natural. For the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That Bible says it's in high places. So when, 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 when you're doing God, you have to be spiritual aware. Because what the enemy will do is find your weakness and keep working on it so you never can lift your hands and say, I love you, Jesus. You never can shout because the devil done peaked out your weakness. You never can run. You'll go home and say, I should have ran today. But I got the weakness on the inside of me. And so you must be spiritual aware. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that the devil crouches at the door waiting for an opening in your life. Somebody say, I got to be aware that if I want to cuss, I'm not going to cuss. Y'all got to help me out. If I, if I want to do some things, you just can't let out your mouth because there's death and life and the power of the tongue. Somebody say, I got to be spiritual aware. Just because you're going through don't mean that you can't lay out for God. When, when you're going through, that's why you, you got to even pray more. Watch this. Number two, and I'm going I'm to quit. You got to trust God in this season. You got to trust him even when you can't trace him. So I got to trust God in this season. I got I to gotta, I gotta trust God. When I don't even hear God, when I you you see the you see the sign when it says I see the the, the, the posters the footprints in the sand. You know how we say when when I'm by myself, God will pick me up and I see one. When you don't even see the footprints in the sand, you got to learn how to trust God. He will never ever leave you nor forsake you. But but you got to stay. You got to stay in bounds. You got you you got you got you got to make sure that when that storm comes and start rocking you, 
that it don't, it don't knock you to the place where you want to give up on God. The song says, don't give up on God because he'll never give up. He's able. Can I get amen? amen. Somebody said, don't give up on God because he'll never give up on Give up on you. Somebody say he's able. I, I, I need that to get in somebody's spirit. I'm, I, I don't care what it looks like. And I don't care what it feels like. Because we try to make somebody else, our situation worse than somebody else. Your, your situation is at the place where you can really handle it. But you got to trust God that he's going to fix it. Stop, stop telling people about your situation when you should be telling God. Am, am, I, am I helping somebody? Am I, because God is the heavy load carrier. He's, he's the God that can fix anything. So when I'm, when, when, when I'm in destiny, I got to try. You, you cannot get to the place that you become unteachable. You, you become unteachable you know everything. What profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Can I get amen? I, I don't care how educated you are, how much money you have. You're going to need God in this season. There's always a storm that's just bigger than your education level. There, there's a storm that's just bigger than your money. Am I helping somebody? And so God says, I'm going to send just a little bit over top your head. So you're going to have to trust on in me to float you out of this thing. Tell somebody I need to float out of this thing this season. Tell them I feel like I'm drowning. Tell them I'm at the end. Tell them I'm tired of this season. And I got to get to the place where God can use me. Tell them I ain't never been in this situation. Tell them I ain't never been in this place. But I serve a God. The old folk would say who sets high and looks low. Tell them you serve a God who can fix all. Watch this. I'm on. Y'all take me home. Watch this. I'm done. I'm done. Watch this. Look at somebody say you got to cast all your cares upon God for he careth for you. Watch this. I, I, I never understood this but now I understand that somebody say my mental health I just stepped somewhere. I, I did not know that they have mental health days on the job. Ooh, I would never be here if I took them days. I would never be. That, that's why I have to keep my mind on God. Because as soon as you lose focus, as, so, as soon as you start thinking about your problems, your, your problems are not bigger than God. No, no way, no how. Jesus looked at Judas and said, Judas, whatever you're going to do, go do quickly. Because I don't, have, I don't have a whole bunch of time to keep. I ain't got, I ain't got a whole bunch of time. Time, time is winding up. It's, it's time to stop playing God and start worshiping God. You're fooling nobody but yourself. Somebody say, I'm, I'm tired of playing God. I'm, and that thing will become a stronghold and you want to get right but that thing, it, 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 it caught your spirit. It's, it's like an alcoholic. It's like a drug addict. They, they really want to stop. But they, but they don't allow that thing to catch their destiny. And now what you're serving becomes bigger than your God. In your mind sight. It becomes bigger than God. But in this season, in, in this season, you got to get back on track. You got you to get back on track. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what part where we think we can't do God and, and still make it. You can't make it without God. God is the creator in the beginning. What's God? God? God is the creator of everything. I don't care what it looks like. 
Somebody say, I got to get back on track. Tell them I'm, 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 I'm off track and I know I'm off track. See, this is when the devil have taken your destiny and spewed it out. Is there some things you want to stop doing, but you can't? Because you thinking what you're doing is the right thing. But it's called a destiny killer. What I want to do real quick, watch this. Watch this. I got to go. I got to go. Watch this. We got five minutes and we out. I'm out. I'm out. Because I got because the enemy is trying to kill your destiny. You, they, you, you, I, bro, God is telling me the enemy is trying to kill your destiny. Because Edgar, we will quit and say, I'm done. I'm done. We'll quit. And we'll lay in our pity party. Paint the windows black. Go get a whole bunch of food. And cry to ourselves. Because the enemy have taken our destiny. You don't want to be like that. But your destiny gone. You get up not knowing the directions God is sending you no more. You get up, you don't hear God no more. You, you just can't see God. Now you, you, you can't see nothing no more. All, all you can do is deal with daily situations. And it's bigger than God. What I want to do real quick, and I got three minutes and I'm out. If you lost your destiny, if you have no sense of direction, the enemy then, then took yourself. You don't know. You don't know tomorrow from last week. This, this for the real saints. This ain't. This ain't for the I know everything people. This ain't for the I know everything people. Amen. I, I know everything. Watch this. Then watch this. Watch this. And I'm out. I, I need you to stand up. I just. I, I don't have no direction. I don't. I don't. I don't. I need you to stand up. I ain't nobody playing today. I got well, stand up. I done lost my dad. Stand up. Anybody else? Stand up. I don't, I don't know which way to go. My bishop asked me one time, you stay in the prayer line. Yeah, because I'm lost. Somebody say I'm lost. I need you to stand up. And this ain't this ain't for nobody else. This is for you by yourself. This is for you by yourself. I need I need I need to find my way back to God. I need to find my way. I need, I need to find my way. I got, I got to find my way. Because if, if, if I don't, I'm going to lose my mind. If I don't, I'm going to throw in the towel. If I don't, I won't be preaching. I won't go to work. i never come to church again if I don't find my way back to God. I'm never coming back. I go get my 401k and fly out of here and I'll never come back again. I never come back. But I found my destiny. Somebody say, I found my destiny. I found my destiny. I found my destiny. Throw your hands up real quick. Throw your hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's I, I'm trying. I'm, if I can just get back to God. God, if I can just get happy one more time. God, if you can just give me my money back. God, if you can make me feel good again. God, if you can anoint me, God. If you can take this stigma off of me, God. I worship you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. God, I need you. I felt like I couldn't play today. Throw your hands up. Father God, you got multiple hands up, God. But God, you're the only God who can do and give them what they need. God, when they lay down tonight, oh my God, if I had the energy, God, when they lay down tonight, put them back on track, God. Let your will be done in their life, God. God, go ahead and use them like never before. God, anoint them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. God, give them supernatural power, God. God, give them so much anointing, God, that even if they wanted to go back, they can't, God. God, give them so much anointing, God, that when they start looking at problems and situation, God, that you they see the solution. 
God anoint them God anoint their circle anoint their children anoint everything around them God bless them like never before God fall fresh fall fresh God I know anointing in this place in Jesus name amen can you clap for God come on clap for God real quick tell God I got my destiny back I tell you to holler I got my destiny back tell him tell him I got my destiny back I, tell him you can't take my destiny I got mine back <sighs> look at somebody say I got it back I don't tell him I got it back I got it back I got it back come on clap for God this ain't for a hey, this ain't for the selfish people this for the folk who want it back the harvest is plenty of us, but the labors are few. Tell them this ain't for the selfish folk. This this for the folk who really need the anointing of God in this season. I, just, I, I, she got it back. I, I dare somebody say, she got it back. Y'all turn that thing up. Tell her, she got it back. You got to tell her, I got it back. I, I got my destiny back. Huh? I got my joy back. I got my shout back. I got my praise back. I got my stuff back. Tell them I got it back. I got my scream back. I got my holler back. I got my anointing back. I got my vision back. I got my destiny back. I got it back. Tell them I got it. I got my joy. I got my destiny back. Devil, you thought you had her. Eyes haven't seen in ears. Tell them I got my stuff back. I got my stuff back. God holds the key. Whew. My God. God holds the key. My God, you got to lift your hands and God holds the key to my destiny. Oh my God, that's it. Watch this scene. Oh, God holds the key. If you believe that, I dare you to say, oh, God holds the key. My God, he got it. God holds the key to my destiny. Come on, can y'all clap for God in this place? You got to go get that thing back. If I could jump. Come on, we got to go. Woo. Mr. Earl, you need something? Did you need something real quick? Come on up here, Mr. Earl. God holds the key. Hey, what you got? Hey, man, come over here real quick. Come here, man. Well, get behind him. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. What we're going to do, we're going to reverse every curse that has been sent to you. I wanted to tell you that Thursday, but this is the right time. Throw your hands up. Do you believe? Do you believe he can do it? Do you believe it? You're going to feel my hand. But the hand you feel gonna have the power of God in it. You gonna feel my hand today. You gonna supernaturally change. Get over there, Edgar. Get your hands off that. See, God holds the key to your destiny. Oh, He holds the key. Never see you go back in that place again. Never see you get back in that place again. That place is done. Come on, clap for God. God holds the key to my. Come on, clap for God. We got to go. Oh, God holds the key to my. I feel the anointing of God. I got to get out of here. Come. I need Tony. Tony here. Come here. Come here for me. I, I, come here, Manuel. 
Come here, come here. I need y'all help y'all. Come here real quick. Come here, Tony. Come here for a minute. I need you to help me. Come here. Come here for a minute. Valente, come here. Come here. Come here. Tony, get behind him. Get behind him. Now, now, never should you think God can change your mind right now. You're going to have power for any storm. Close your eyes. Any storm. Any wave. You got too much in you to not know God. Now. Miss Nancy, come here for a minute. We got to go. I got to go. I ain't got but one minute. Come here. Come here, Tony. Get back. Come here, Miss Nancy. Come here, baby. Come here. You trying to say, why I just can't get right? Why I just, I, why I can't, why I can't get married? Why I can't have no money? Why can't? God going to give you everything right now. Your money, your peace, your direction. Doors have, are closing now. They're closing, they're closing. God is opening up new doors because you got a new key. The old keys won't fit no more. They're closed. It won't fit no more. You got to know, I, I hear God saying, I'm closing doors. I'm, I'm setting windows. I'm, I'm, I'm moving people in places. Uh, your circle got to change you. The devil almost took your anointing, almost took your shout. But you too anointed for this in the name of, you too anointed for this. God, I know her. Fall fresh. That's it. I know, give it everything. Give her destiny, her praise, her worship. Give it back. Get, get, give it to her. God, she said, I'm not going down until I get it back. I'll stay up here and let him pray till I get it back. You got to get to the place that if you scream, I get it back. Come on, can y'all clap your hands for God? We're gonna we're gonna get ready to do something real quick. Can um can Miss Can you go get? No, come here for a minute. Get ready. Y'all come here. Throw your hands up. Don't nobody know what you've been through, and it took God, only God. For you to get back to this place. I want you to see yourself. Free. I, I want you to see yourself. In your mind. See yourself shouting. See yourself driving. Your, see yourself living in it. See yourself on it. See yourself. Now watch this. If two or three are gathered. See yourself running towards your destiny. Running towards your destiny. Running towards. I see it. Sometimes you got to run till you get there. Sometimes. Sometimes you got to scream until you get it. Y'all know this ain't what I do, but I got every now and then I got to scream till I I got to holler. I got to holler till I get there. To my destiny. Come on, can y'all clap for God? Wait. You might not understand what's going on. But God is shifting the atmosphere. God is raising up prophets and preachers and anointed men and women of God. God said, I'm doing it, Tony, in this season. Scotty, he said, I'm doing it in this season. I'm God by my, by myself, I'm God. He says, I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. Can you go get them for me? We got, can you go get them to you? Yeah, come on, clap. I got to go preach again. God holds the key. Woo. I know his feet, God, that when he walked, God, he'll, Anoint him, God. 
See, sometimes you'll just lay in the presence of God. Sometimes you just, sometimes, sometimes you'll just lay out for God. We got to go. What I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to ask one question. And we out. Let me let my wife. My wife out there teaching the youth. And I'm teaching the adult. Y'all got to know God is. Hey. I just feel the. Come on. Can y'all clap for the anointed woman of God? Y'all. Woo. God. Sometimes she just start running to her destiny. Because if you can see it spiritually. You can get it in the natural. Tell them I got to see it before I see it. I got to see it. God. What we're going to do. Come on. Come on. Dante, throw my music on back there real quick. Can y'all just clap one more time? My God. For my destiny. We was home yesterday, and I was going to take my wife out to eat, and because out of nowhere, somebody sent me $1,200 yesterday, but I, but I was going to take my wife out to eat, but I, so I got up, and she was cooking food, and we still had to study and get everything together. While I was eating, God was telling me that the church y'all see now, the people you see, that you have got caught up in a whirlwind, and God can start anointing everything in you, financially and physically. So I told my wife, I found a, I said, I found a church in Suffolk. And it's only 395000 I say, but it's not that season to get it. God say, he's staying at school. And the church can still be available. So God said, once you get that church, I'm going to open up another one in Virginia Beach. God says, because our hand, my hand is on this church. Y'all got to clap for God. You too far in to give up now so what we're going to do real quick two questions I'm going to put them all in one put three in one the Father the Son the Holy Ghost I want I want to thank my my daughter fiance for being a part of joining last Sunday thank you so much can y'all clap for the kids Woo, the young adults did y'all know he's a starter in football this brother played deep deep as in he ain't got but one more game. I got to get out of here. Thursday, going to see him play. Can y'all clap for them? Woo. Oh, yeah. No, people. Y'all. My wife just asked me. What we missed. What? <laughs> you got. <laughs> so what we're going to do real quick. What we're going to do real quick. So I, I got the guys to pass out flyers. And I gave all the young guys 50 bucks yesterday. Can y'all clap your hands? Say it because you wanted to come. Cat, give me your cash up. I'm going to send you $50. Amen. So I am paying all of the security people $50 a piece out of my pocket today too. Amen. Somebody said that's $400. But God is truly amazing. So what I want to do for the next, we're going to get out of here in two minutes. So if you're going to suffer, they have some biscuits and some drinks back there that you can grab. Before we can go, all right? Huh? Get it and go. So, a couple of things. Let me just let me just get to it. If you don't have, y'all got Mr. Earl up yet? He still laid out. They got get him up, get up. Miss Shillin' them fell out, and Miss Nancy them fell out. Everybody, y'all help Mr. Earl up. He'll never be the same again. Amen. He'll never be the same again. I, I just heard in my spirit. I just heard in my spirit. Mr. Earl ready to find him a wife. I just felt that in my spirit. I, I just felt that in my spirit. Ooh, you ain't got to do this by yourself long. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can y'all clap for him? 
All right. What we're going to do real quick. This is my beautiful wife. Hey, beautiful. I would tell him you cook. Y'all get them. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to do three and one, and we're gone. We got one minute to leave. Is that if you need to be saved, or if you need, you need to look at Facebook when you go home. If you need to be saved, give your life to Christ, or if you're not a member, a partner, we don't call you members, we call you a partner. If you want to do what we are doing, I need you to raise your hand. Saying, today is my day. I'm either going to be saved, I'm going to be a partner, or I'm going to give my life to Christ. I need you to raise your hand high today, not low. Some of us say high, because I don't want to do this by myself no more. If that's you, you saying, I need to be a partner. I, I, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here. If that's you today, Raise your hand. You want to be a member, a partner. Raise your, raise your hand. Hi. I, have, have you said, I hope he just shut his mouth. I'm going to say it one more time. If you need to be a member, a partner, raise your hand high. Come on, clap your hands for God. Judah was trying to raise his hand. Hey, oh, my, my grandson. I'm gonna think. <laughs> no, uh You know what he's doing? He'll, he'll, He'll remember the shirt. Right. Thank you, Bug. Amen. Let me ask one more time. Maybe the other ones might, might raise their hand. Anybody else? And I need to be a partner of this church. A member. Raise your hand. You you already have member, Eddie? Okay, all right, cool. All right. Somebody raise their hand. Anybody? Yeah, we ain't going to be scared because I ain't going to put you on blast. Who was it? Raise your hand how you want to be a member. Raise your hand. Ain't nobody playing with y'all. Amen. Okay. All right, clap your hands for God. Amen. Are we good? You need to say something? Y'all, y'all, y'all make sure that the youth that they come out. We are growing some. I was so impressed. I know Sister Crystal was as well. I was so impressed with those youth. And y'all haven't seen anything. Make sure those youth come out. They are going to grow. Your youth team, we are excited. And when we're watching them, my God, they are so, they know so much. And then when they learn, you can just see the light bulbs. Like, then I had one leaving out trying to ask me a question. Wait a minute, hold up. Did <laughs> I said, text me, text me. That's so that's exciting. Yeah, also this Wednesday we have a financial um Finance, adult financial literacy for the adults, but don't forget, bring the youth because we're going to have uh, all kinds of stuff for them. Yeah, if you need to learn more about your money, we have Sister Christina. She's not here. That's uh, her husband, Freddie. Yes, right there. Right there. We are, uh, I never bring things to the church that don't work. That's right. Make sure you come. We, it's going to be awesome this Wednesday. Yes. Also, they have a women's meeting this Thursday. Yes. Getting geared up. The women's conference. Uh, for the, Women's Conference, we have a lot going on. Um, baby, thank you for the pork chops, the chicken. They were good, too. The cabbage. The cabbage, the rice, the gravy. And I said, can you make me some cookies? Can you make me and some cookies, ma'am? Pork chop and chicken. But it was baked chicken. It was baked chicken. Can you make me some cookies? That girl made about 12 cookies. Woo! But we, we, we just have a lot going on. We are going to get out of here. Um, Vante and Valente, and make sure you get them signs. I got one on the back of my truck, um, and we are going to Suffolk. I'll be preaching at 1215. We passed out door hangers, and we just want to say thank you for all that. Also, put our tithes and offering back up there, please. If you didn't have a chance to give, make sure you give. This is a part of your destiny. You, you, spiritually, this elevates you spiritually. This is part of your destiny. Somebody said, this is a part of my destiny. Stop talking to people who don't understand destiny. Stop talking to people who don't understand destiny. How, the Bible says that the poor will be with you always. I just made myself never to be poor always. All right? Stop talking to people who don't understand destiny. You can do cash app, square, envelope, or you can go back there to the um, 
uh, square in the back, and got Keisha back there, and we're gonna give. All right. I don't. If you need an envelope, raise your hand, cause I do not want to rob you. I gave you a word. Now give and let it soak. All right. I told them Wednesday that if you don't put a seed in the ground and rain come, you just getting a flood. You just getting a flood. You flood it out. You ever had a car, the old cars used to flood? You got a flood. What you boom, 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 car won't even start. Because you ain't had no seed in the ground. Amen? Put a seed and when the rain come, you'll get your harvest. Amen? Thank you for watching Prince of Peace Praise Center. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. Feel free to come worship with us at our Norfolk location at 419 Glen Rock Road, North Virginia, 23502. And visit our website, princeofpeacepc.org. God bless.